Let's talk about trust. Let's talk about zero trust. When you're accessing your network remotely, you wanna do it in a zero trust environment. Unfortunately, with the age of AI, if you have just a standard VPN and it's open that just requires a username and password, there's AI bots that are out there scanning all the networks across the world, rotating username and passwords that they've purchased off the dark web and loaded into a script kitty bot. They're making the old traditional style of VPNs extremely insecure. Best way to go about it is to have a zero trust VPN network set up. A zero trust network only accepts clients that you authorize. By that I mean a computer, a phone, or a tablet, some kind of device that you're gonna connect back to your home network or small office network. You would have to authorize per device. Instead of a traditional VPN where it's, oh, you have a username, password, you might have a SHA key as a credential that you would share. Those are not secure anymore. You need the zero trust setup to make it secure. Unfortunately, that's just how things Things are. But first, this video is sponsored by me and my fiance. Doesn't it just feel like you're living on Whore Island? It does for me. I feel like a whore right now. Show your support for the channel and your love of the game of living on Whore Island. Hustle it to make that money. Get your piece of memorabilia today from my fiance's Etsy shop. She's got all kinds of cool shit on there. Currently, this is one of a kind, but if there's demand for it, she'll make more. Now, on with the video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you NetBird. NetBird allows us to do a zero trust VPN network. It allows up to five users to connect for free and it has up to a hundred peers. What that means is on your home network, you could have up to a hundred devices. That also includes your remote client. So if you had a phone, a tablet, a home server, that would qualify as three peers. So we're gonna go ahead and set this service up in one of my previous videos, I demoed the Zima OS for your home server. This can be done on any server that you want, as long as you're running Docker on that server. So if you're running Linux, you could run Docker. If you're running Windows, you could run Docker. And also available on Mac, you can run Docker. On this though, I'm gonna use it with Zima OS. Now on Zima OS, I've already installed Portainer. Pretty easy to do. It's like everything with a Zima OS is super simple. On Linux, Windows, Mac, there's probably a hundred videos on how to install portainer as a docker container it's very simple it's straightforward on the zima os you just go into your apps type in portainer it's right there hit install you're done so we'll go ahead and get into portainer we'll click on our group and inside here we're going to go into our stacks we're gonna add a new stack. And I'm gonna have this listed on my website for easy to copy and paste commands. We will need to get a setup key. The first thing we need to do is set up an account on NetBird. And like I said earlier, it gives you up to five users, up to a hundred peers. Once you get registered and get into your NetBird account, the first thing you'll see is probably a welcome screen. Just click on show me my dashboard. There should be a small link that you can skip the little introduction wizard that it has. And after you get logged into your dashboard, we're gonna to wanna to come over to set up keys. Create a setup key. Let's just call it home network. And we're gonna to wanna to make this key reusable. It'll be reusable for seven days. We'll go ahead and create setup key. And we're gonna copy this key and we're gonna use it in our Docker container. And don't worry folks, I'm gonna be deleting this because I know how all you little internet bastards are. I'm sure you, oh, I'm gonna fucking get his key. <laughs> no, you're not, because I'm gonna delete all this shit. So we go ahead and close that out. We come back over to our portainer. I'll have, like I said, I'll have all this listed on my website so you can copy and paste it. You're gonna, you're gonna take that key and put it in your NB setup equals key. So we'll take this. This is your YAML file. We're gonna go over to add stack. This name does need to be lowercase. We'll just call it NetBird. We'll have our YAML file pasted. And if you do read the YAML file, what we're doing here is we're gonna make this on the host network. So that way it talks to your host network and it's not gonna be sectioned off to where it's not on your same subnet. You want it to be on your host network, if you're curious. We'll go ahead and deploy the stack. If we come over to containers, we notice the NetBird client is up. And if we come back over here to NetBird, we're gonna see home network key is right there. We're gonna come over to our peers. 
we're going to see our Zima OS. That is our server. This will be whatever your server's name is. And this is the uh, NetBird's internal routing for their IP addresses. That's how it talks. And now that we see that our server is up, we're going to go ahead and go into network route. We're going to add a route. And right here, we're going to add in our subnet. Mine is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. That gives us from 1.1 to 1.254 with a subnet of 255.255.255.0. The next thing we need to do is select our peer group. We're going to say add all because we want everything to talk with each other. Go ahead and hit continue. Under groups, we're going to select all. Continue, and we'll just name this Home Network. Home Network. We're going to enable the route, masquerades, leave all this as default, add route. Now that our route has been made, let's go back up to peers. You're going to select your server, and down here we are going to make this an exit node. Set up exit node. For your group, select all, continue. Exit node name, leave it as default. It'll say whatever your server's name is. Enable root and add exit node. Now that we've got our exit node set up, we're gonna to wanna to install NetBird on one of our remote devices. For me, it's gonna be a phone. For you, it might be a tablet or a laptop that you wanna connect back to your home or office. The initial setup, you will be required to have that phone, tablet, or laptop on the same network as the server that you wanna to connect to or desktop that you wanna to connect to remotely. This is part of the zero trust environment. This is how we authorize it. You wanna go ahead and install the NetBird client on your phone, tablet, or laptop. They've got a version for Windows, Mac, Linux, it, anything you need, they've got you covered. It's all on their website uh, under their downloads. For a phone, it's going to be in your Android Play Store or your iPhone App Store. So let's go ahead and open up the app. We are going to go ahead and hit the center of it to connect. It's going to want us to authorize. All right. So we are connected here on the app. Let's go back over to NetBird and you're gonna see our peers. My phone is registering as BlueJay. It'll say like iPhone or some bullshit. It'll, it'll make up some name, who knows. It's showing that our server's here, my phone is here. So let's come back over to the phone and disconnect. Let's just close out the app and let's disconnect the Wi-Fi so we're on 5G so we can simulate being outside of the network. Let's go ahead and fire up the app again. Connect it. Now that we're connected, let's see if we can access our Zima OS. Boom, there we go. Now, if you had NextCloud installed, you'd be able to access NextCloud or whatever else. If you had security cameras, you could access them either through whatever app they came with or with your web browser. Because now that you're connected with this phone, you're authorized over here through NetBird, through your peer account, to your entire network, to your entire subnet. So once you've got a peer that is trusted, it will be able to access everything on your subnet. And that's how that works. And if you had files and stuff that you wanted to access remotely, obviously any anything you could do through your web browser, you could do right here. That's just showing you, hey, we're on 5G. We're connected remotely back here. Just a demo. But like, you know, if you had your NextCloud or whatever, you could just, you could pull up your NextCloud app on your phone. I don't have NextCloud installed on the Zemo OS demo server that I've got. But if, if you had NextCloud installed, you could just open up your app and boom, there you go. You're secure and that's it. It's one of the safest ways to set up a VPN nowadays. I'm going to have links to all this in the show notes and I'll have all the guide and everything published on my website and I'll leave all that in the description below. And that's it for Zero Trust Networks. All right, get out there and do something cool. Catch you in the next one.